and welcome to Lucy's Big Beautiful World of Painting. Today I'm doing something different than I haven't done on any of my other shows and I am planning to paint a very, very simple and basic lighthouse. I was thinking of um, something new to do and I was speaking to some of my friends and Lynn Sirk from um, upstate New York, a wonderful teacher there, um, said, why don't you do a lighthouse? You haven't done that before. So here it is. So I'm going to show you how I started. Um, first of all, let me tell you today, I'm using Deco Art products, and I have um, beautiful Deco Art Traditions brushes that I'm using. And um, I first use uh, a transfer paper. Okay, so what I did was I just transferred a very simple lighthouse on, and the way I got that lighthouse was I printed out a um, a picture off the internet from a um, coloring book page. Okay, so whenever you want a simple, simple. Um, idea just go through coloring book pages okay so I just took this one and I transferred it on with the graphite paper so all you do is put the graphite paper um, on your canvas you put your um, template on top and you just go over it with a pencil or a stylus okay so this is a really great product um, it comes out very nice and clear and dark okay and this is actually a huge sheet in here and this is called transfer paper I always call it graphite but it's called transfer paper it is graphite so um, just wanted to show you that so now what I've done was I put a piece of tape across just so I have my horizon line and I used a ruler on the um, page when I did it just to get a straight line um, however we're going to wing it a little because what we'll do is we're going to paint this in black and then um, we're going to put our background on and then we'll come back and go over it again if we have to. All right. So first, I think what I'd like to do is I just want to get some of this lighthouse on. So this way you could see where I'm going with it. I am going to use some painter's tape. All right. Because I want to try to get my edge here a little straight. All right. So I'm just going to come here. We're going to paint over that that line anyway. There is going to be paint over it. All right. Now you don't have to do this at home. If you have plenty of time, you can go right up to those edges with a nice straight brush and then, um, you know, you're good to go, all right? But for now, to save some time, I'm just going to put this close to my edge and then I can just start painting. And you can see I just kind of drew in this little, uh, this little ship in the background just showing that you can put a little something extra in there, all right? So for now, I want to get this on here. Now. What I have done was I already uh, made up my uh, palette of paint, okay? The paint is the premium line. This is um, very, very nice paint, comes in tubes. Now, some of my colors, I want them to stay wet longer. So what I have done is I have taken the, um, this is extender medium, okay? And I, you could see I put some on my palette here. I have taken a little bit of the extender and mix it into the paint. So I'm just going to go over there and mix it into my phthalo blue. Now, I'm using a trowel-like um, knife here, okay? So there is a difference between knives. Let me just show you that real fast before we get started. I'm going to wipe that off and get rid of that so I don't get it all over me. And this knife you can use uh, for painting. It's easily, um, you know, um, easily, I was going to say easily usable for painting, but that didn't make any sense. Um, it has the straight edges, so it's, it's easy when you're putting in lining and all, all right? So this one isn't usually used for mixing, but you can if you wanted to. This is the travel type. It has these round edges, and that's easier for mixing. So, so far, I have mixed up my paint, all right? Um, I wanted to get a little bit of that done, but really all you're doing is just stirring it around, picking it up, moving it, all right? And have some paper towels nearby so you can always um, wipe off your knife or even an old phone book that you can put your knife in and then just pull the paint right off and then you can just rip the pages out, all right? Um, so the way I'd like to start this is I'm going to take a flat brush. This is a three-quarter flat brush. And let me see, it may be too big, but I'm going to give it a try. And I'm going to go into my white paint. This is titanium white. I'm just going to move it over into the middle. I'm going to take a, the tiniest dab of blue ever and just make a pale, pale blue. Okay, so this I'll have this as my mixing area. And if I don't have enough mixing area here because I put out a lot of paint, I can always go and get another, another disposable paper here, all right? So what I want to do is I just want to come in here and I want to get a little bit of blue on here. Now, see how nice and smooth that's going? 
very smooth. Now the reason I'm putting blue on there is just so it looks like a little bit of a shadow. So I'm going to go wipe my brush off a little bit. Actually, I think I'll swish it around a little water and just get some of that blue off. I'm just dabbing it down here on a paper towel, okay? I'm going to go into the plain white. I'll just move this white over here. I want real, real, real white right now. And I'm going to come in here. See, I'm going right over that tape, and that's fine. So now you can see we have a little blue, we have a little white. To me, that looks like it's a little bit too much blue. So I will come back in again, wipe my brush off, get a little bit more white, and lay that on a little heavier here. Okay, so this way I have more white there. Now on that side, I can make it a little bit more blue. So I'll just take the tiniest bit. Now these are high pigmented paint, okay? You can see how vivid these colors are. And I took the tiniest bit, and look how blue that is. All right, so I'm just gonna put a little blue in there. I think I'm gonna come into my little bit of black and just dull that down a little bit. There we go. So I have a little bit of a gray, which I had a dark gray there and I could have used it, but it's nice to learn how to mix the colors too. I'm just gonna come in on the side and I'm gonna put a little bit in there. And I can tell I need a little bit more medium. So I'm just gonna, I just dab my brush in that medium on the side there. Now I'm gonna smooth this out. So I want one side a little bit darker. And I'm just gonna smooth it over. So as I smooth it, I'm actually pushing a little bit harder. So now we have a nice little shadow and I can even use a chisel brush to spread that paint around. Now, on the show, it dries a little faster than it would at home, and that's because we have all these lights on, all right? So I'm just going to throw my brush in the water. Now, when you are using acrylic, always just keep your brush damp. So I'm putting it right in the water and just going to stay there. I'm just going to take this off right now, just so you can take a peek on how easy that was to get that lighthouse with that shadow. Now, the rest here would be just a black top. Now I can put that in now or after the sky. So what I can do is I'm just gonna take a nice round brush and I feel so, some paint on me. Let me get that off first so I don't stick to my brush. All right, and I have a nice, nice round brush here. And I have a black paint here, all right, and I'm going to just dip a little in my brush. Now I'm hurrying a bit but at home, you could take your time. I didn't put the extender in the black because I want the black to dry faster. So I'm just gonna outline this a little. Look how beautiful this goes on. Beautiful brush, beautiful paint, all right? Now, if I'm not too neat here, like I said, not gonna worry about it. I am going to end up going over it a little bit when I do my sky, and then I can go back over with the black, and that's when I can really, really straighten it out. Alrighty, so you can see I got a little crooked there. I just don't want to lose my template so much and just painting that in real fast, and that is a little crooked. So I would try to anchor myself and straighten that out. And it helps if I don't talk. <laughs> there we go, so close enough, all right? And I have a line going down here. Now there's some very, very intricate lighthouses. And if you look up pictures, you can see a lot of lighthouses, what they have the, um, you know, the gating around it and all. But just for the sake of showing you how to just do a real fast lighthouse, I'm just showing you, you know, a quick one for now and a simple one. There we go. So I'm just putting on this little portion. Like I said, I'm going to come back. I could straighten that out. Right now, I just want to show you how easy it is to get a little lighthouse on here, okay? And, oh, good enough for now. Like I said, I'll straighten that out later. I have a little hair on this brush. I'm just going to kind of roll that back into the brush. Now, I may want to put a little, a little window over here. So I'm just going to come in, and there we go. Little window, okay? There we have nice little, little white house. Lighthouse, sorry. So now I'm just rinsing my brushes a little bit. You can hear me swishing them around in the, in the bucket. And now what I'd like to do is I like to do part of this background. I have this um, brand new brush, okay? This is a two inch flat. And this is used a lot of times with the chalky paint for, um, 
for furniture and all. However, you can use it on canvas. You just have to see, depending on the tooth of your canvas and all, if it works for you. It may be too soft. If, if not, then you can go to a, um, a different flat brush. I have a pretty big area to cover here and um, not too much time. So I'm going to try the big brush and see how that goes. If not, then I will go to the smaller brush. Okay, so I would like a gradation of, of blue on here, all right? We want a nice blue sky. Now, sometimes skies are all blue, all right? And that's fine, too. You know, if you're a beginner and, and you don't feel like, you know, trying to, to do a gradation, which you feel, you know, may be a little difficult at this time, you can just make it a nice pale blue to start. Just make sure your blue is not the same as the blue in that lighthouse. All right, so I have some white on my brush right here, and I can just take a little bit of this blue, and I'm gonna put a little more medium. I want it to be nice and slick, and I can even take a little of this blue. All right, now, I'm gonna go right over this little boat, okay? I just wanted to show you that you can just put a little boat in there. So I'm just gonna go right over it, and you'll see how that's gonna go right in there. Now, I feel like the brush is a little too soft for this tooth of the canvas. So I am gonna put that one down. I'm gonna go to a, another flat brush. All right, so I'll have, uh, I'll have more to do because it's a, uh, of course it's a smaller brush, but that's okay. I just dipped in my extender and I'm gonna take more paint because I know that I'm gonna need a lot more paint for that. All right, so here I go. Just going to mix that up real nice. I'm gonna take a dab of blue. We want a really, really pale blue there for the bottom. Okay, a lot of times with the sky, I'll be lighter down at the bottom. So, let's see. And let me make sure that I don't have the same blue as in my lighthouse. Nope, I'm pretty good there. So, I'm just going to start to fill this in. All right, now when I come up to the lighthouse, rather than go like this to fill it in, there's more of a chance that it'll end up crooked, all right? And it's okay, because you could always, you know, fix it. But what I suggest is you anchor yourself and just go right up to the edge and pull it this way. I'm just pulling it and see I'm wiggling the brush a little and pulling it, all right? So I have to get a little closer. I hope you can see I'm trying to hold myself from the an for, on an angle and I'm wiggling and pulling, wiggling and pulling. And I see I have some of my graphite line there that's okay, because all I have to do is wiggle right over. All right, now, I can tell I need a little bit of um, a heavier paint on there, but you can see where we're going with that. All right, so I'm gonna go back in. I need a little more extender. It's drying pretty quick in these lights today. And I'm gonna come to the other side, and I will try not to be in the way. I'm going over my graphite line, and I'm pulling. Graphite line, pulling, okay? So of course it is quicker to go like this, but if you're not used to doing that, it is harder, all right? Now, I can see that that color is pretty close now. So you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna get some of this on, and then I'm gonna make my paint a little darker as we go up the horizon. Doesn't have to be even, all right? You can have some, some light here, some dark, Either way. Now, in the meantime, that black in there is drying, all right? So then I can even go in there and I'll put some, a little bit of blue in there. I'll use a smaller brush. So now, here's my mixing, my mixing pile of blue. Getting more extender. I'm gonna take a nice big pile of white and put that in there, all right? And I'm gonna take more blue now. And look at that color, okay? So you could do a value scale, which means light and dark of the same color, and have that um, gradation go right up the canvas, okay? So let's try over here. And here we go. I'm gonna start to get some nice color in there. All right, I'm gonna take more blue, more white. See that? It's almost the same. More medium. And there we go. Now, if I want this to look a little artsy, I can have the brush stroke showing, which is very nice, or I can really blend. I like the idea of having um, varied brush strokes in a painting like this, okay? So I'm just gonna come over here, and again, see, I'm holding on the chisel edge and I'm pulling. Moving down a little and pulling. 
There we go. So I got a little crooked there, and that's okay. Like I said, I can fix that when I have the time. And see, I'm just patting it. See what happens when you go straight down? I went right into my, light, my lighthouse there. Back into the paint. And I'm just moving it around now. And then I can go back and get a little extender, and I can push a little harder. And you can see that will glaze it almost and then I can fill in that tooth of the canvas. Now, I like the idea of having some of the white showing because it actually looks like some clouds. Now, up in this corner, I'm gonna add a little more blue. I wanna try to frame this a little bit, okay? So, look at that beautiful blue. Now, see the difference when I lay the paint on a little heavier? All right, you can see here, I, I had the paint on a little light. And here I'm putting it on a little heavier. So let me go ahead and get some more heavier paint in there because I like the way that looks up there. There we go. And this is a beautiful brush. It's working very well. And I did not uh, coat my painting, so the tooth in my painting is a little big. So if you happen to be worried about that, then all you have to do is uh, put a coat of a white gesso on it. And that comes in a nice little jar. And you just lay that out and you just paint it on, and you're good. All right, so I'm gonna keep going. Now I'm going to go a little bit carefully around my lighthouse, around the top of the lighthouse, and around the inside of the lighthouse. There we go. I'm gonna try to get a little bit of color in here. Now, this color will show a little bit on that black, but like I said before, that's all right. All you have to do is you'll go back over it again. Alrighty, there we go. Now we have a nice little, a nice little sky. Um, you can see which way I'm going with that. All right, wanted to hurry and get some color on here because once you see the color, then you can see what my goal of the painting is. And I hope you'll try this at home and try um, get yourself some of these wonderful pigmented paints. Um, beautiful, beautiful colors and they mix very well together. Today I kind of took the easy way out and I haven't been mixing many colors, but we'll see as we get down to the bottom. Um, I'm gonna put a little bit of greenery in there and I'm gonna stop fussing with the sky in a minute so I can go back to the greenery, okay? So I can just take some medium over here and I can come back in. Now what I'd like to do is get some white and just kind of come in here where I see the canvas showing and it almost is going to look like a little bit of a cloud formation, all right? And if we have time, I can actually put some, some clouds on there. So I'm gonna have to step back a little because I'm right up front here and I'm having a little trouble seeing so close. So I wanna step back after I get some of this uh, color in here. And I like the way that dark corner looks on that other side, so. I probably would even go and darken it more, but I'd like to get some of the uh, grasses on and the water that I had planned to put in there. All right, just a little bit more on here. And you can see I'm blending and moving the paint around. And to me, I think that looks pretty good. All right, now, like I said, if you don't like a brush strokes, you don't have to have brush strokes. You can go back in and smooth them. I like the way the brush strokes look. Makes it look very artsy, okay? so. Let me quickly take the tape off here, and sometimes this tape gives me trouble, and sometimes it doesn't. There we go. So let's get this tape off. There we go. All right. So, all righty. Almost. There it is. I think that looks pretty good for, for uh, being quick with it. Now, what I'd like to do is I'd like to just lay in some water here. So I'm going to go in my, my phalo again, but I'm going to make it darker. All right, so same thing. When you're laying in water, I would lay it in this way, all right? Now, if you go this way, you have more of a chance. See, it's very, very hard to keep it straight. For the sake of time, I'm just going to lay in this water this way. Now, I know that I wanna put a little bit of land down here, so I'm just gonna get some of this water in. I'm going right in the middle of my palette where I had that blue, but I know I want it darker, okay? I do want that water darker. Back into my medium, back into my blue. I just wanna get a little water on and then I'm gonna quickly show you how 
I put in the um, a little bit of greenery on this side there. Now, I think that's wonderful. You can see this paint and the pigment of this paint, all right? You can see the darks and the lights. I'll even go and get a little darker just to show you. You can make a little bit of even wave movement just by putting in some darks there, all right? Now, like I said, at home, take your time. Don't have to do it as quick as I'm doing it right now, and it will come out much better, I'm sure. What I would like to do is, I wanna show you this fabulous brush. Um, this is called a red mop brush, and it's a nice big brush. Now, in my black paint, I did not put the medium because I want this to dry fast, okay? So what I wanna do is I'm gonna put some, some bushes here. So I'm just gonna come in, and I'm going to dab in some bushes, all right? Now, you can see I'm just using the tip of this brush. I don't want to wet this whole brush with paint, but I just want to get some nice bushes in here. Now, right now, of course, you're saying, oh my gosh, those bushes are black. Now I just mix with the white so they're gray. <laughs> but um, I just want to get this black in, and then we're going to be putting some beautiful greens and yellows on top, and then this painting will be done, all right? So. I'm just gonna keep tapping away here. And like I said, this is a big, nice big mop brush. You can see how much area I'm getting, all right? Doesn't have to be perfect, just tapping. Tap, tap, tap. And how often do I say tap, tap, tap? My students make fun of me sometimes um, when I do classes and I go tap, tap, tap. Then they all go tap, tap, tap. So you have to be able to have fun, right? Here we go. Now. So this will be just some bushes in front of the water. Now, since I put such a dark color in the front, you can see everything looks pushed back, okay? So I'm going to just put this brush down for a minute, just gonna let this dry for one minute. What I'll do is just come over with a, a thin round brush, okay? This one, let me see what number this is. This is a round, and sorry, you can't see it. <laughs> it's a, a, just a very thin round brush. I'm gonna come over into my dark area and just put a couple of these. All right, now it's still wet back there, so I'm gonna get some thicker paint, and I wanna put a couple of these, there we go, just to represent a couple little seagulls in the background. There we go. I wanted to put a little something back there just to even, you know, kind of balance the painting a little, right? And then I'm gonna throw this brush in the water. My, my black, I probably would go over, but I'm not going to do it right now. So what I wanna do is I'm just going to wipe this black out a little bit. I'm not going to wet it. We don't wanna soak this brush, okay? I just wanna wipe it out, get some of that black out there because we wanna go to a lighter color now. Now, I have some nice sap green which might be a little bit too dark. So I'm gonna put some sap green going into some primary yellow. And again, I'm tapping and here we go. Just going to come and tap on top. And I'm leaving some of that black showing. And then you'll see this is going to start looking like some greenery, okay? And hopefully you can see that. I'm going to wipe my brush just a little bit again. Now, ideally, I would let this dry a few more minutes, but for the sake of time, just going to come right on top of it. I'm going to get a little more yellow. I want that a little lighter. I want to make sure that you can see it, okay? So here we go. I'm going to come and tap, 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 tap. I want to open up my bristles, so I'm going to push it down hard and tap. Okay, now I'm going right over this because I want to show you what happens. Now you can see I'm getting a little gray and that's because it's mixing with that black as it wasn't dry. Now if you want the colors to mix, then do it while it's wet. If you don't, then just give it a couple minutes. It will dry in a few minutes. And I didn't have the extender in here. Okay, so this will dry uh, even faster. All right, so you can see I'm starting to get some greenery there. So I'm just going to dab out my brush a little again. I'm just pouncing it on a paper towel. Going to back in some straight yellow. I'm using whatever part I have here. And look at that. Now we have some nice lighter color. So let me come in here, try to break this up a little bit. And this painting is almost done. I mean, I can keep adding and adding and adding. However, um, it's, it depends on how you want your painting to be. You don't have to add, you may want it simple, or you may say, you know what, I like the idea of adding. I like the idea um, how this looks, putting a lighter color on top. 
So now that I like how that looks, I will go back and pound straight in my yellow. And I think I'll come over here and try to get a little bit of yellow. You see, so you can go back and forth and back and forth. I like the way that looks, that yellow. Now, like I said, you can keep working and working and working on it, adding, adding, adding. I'm just going to add a little bit more down here. I'm not, I don't have to fill this all in because it could just look like it's in shadow. All right. I can come over here and put a little bit more. So you would stand back from your painting, take a peek at where you feel like you want some darks and lights. And of course, in this painting, um, you could even put some sand down there if you wanted to. I'm just making all the greenery in front. All right. Now, one last thing before I go is I'd like to show you how you can put some, some wave movement, all right? So I'm just going to take some white on the side, and I'm just spreading it out, and I'm going to pick up some, I'm going to scrape it onto the, onto the knife. Now, it's, it's a little sticky because it's drying a little, but I want to show you how we could just go straight across, and we can get some movement in that water. Whatever is coming off of the knife, that's what I'm, we're putting in there. That's, that's all I'm putting is whatever is coming off, okay? No rhyme or reason to this, just laying some on, all right? So I think that looks pretty nice. Um, like I said, I like the idea of having the whites, um, the white peeking through. I see a little bit of dry area. I could always go back and um, paint over that a little bit more. But for, um, for a very simple lesson that anybody can do, I think it's a, it's a good start. Um, I, I see the little graphite line here, and you know what? I kind of like it. Um, it. It does kind of frame a little. Um, with, uh, with extra time, you can go in, and you can come back, and you can darken. You can darken your, your blacks. Okay, I would come in here and really even this out and put another coat if I had to. All right, because this is the focal point here, is the lighthouse. And you can come in, even that out, make it larger. Of course, if, as I'm evening it out, it's getting larger. But um, I think that's pretty good for, for a quick beginner painting um, using the DecoArt paints. Okay, so um, come over to DecoArt.com, take a look at their beautiful products. There's so much more than what I'm showing here. And try this premium paint. Don't forget to get your extender. Okay, like I said, there's some paint you'll use extender and some, and some you won't. So um, thank you again and um, take a look at my other shows. Mm -hmm.